Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, just to briefly reintroduce ourselves, my name is Brian, and I'm here with my colleagues Stephanie, Cody, and Jacob. We're really excited about the plan and the recommendations, strategic recommendations we have for LAYC for you here today, um, based on the deliverables you gave us on our last meeting. But before we dive into that strategic strategy, we want to focus on some one success story of the LAYC program, and that's Christina. Christina was at 16 when she became pregnant and was unable to complete her high school education. She found LAYC and they provided her with the resources to complete her GED, provided her with the resources to attend college, and ultimately she's one of our most recent recruits out of the LAYC program. And we believe it's success stories like this that make our work look so worth it. So to focus on what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be going over our overall analysis, some Q&A, give you a little bit of brief overview on the solution implementation, and save you some um, time for the overall business impact. But like we said, with stories like Christina, it's all about the mission and where we find value and passion in the industry. So you know, above all else, other than identifying revenue streams to go back into LAYC, we want to make sure that those streams can be put back into the program to help empower the youth and really allow them to have a more efficient and easy transition into the adulthood that they're facing. So overall solution analysis, we completed a weighted criterion analysis where you can see we have a set of graded criteria on the left for analysis, which was applied different rates for our different solutions which can be found in bold in the top right corner. Um, this resulted in different scores across the board which allowed us to identify the consulting option as well as strategic partnerships with universities to certify students which is a hybrid solution we came up based off of the certification program and different university partnerships. Um, and this will influence our solutions moving forward. So you're probably wondering what is this going to look like. So here we like to call this the triple E approach. The first being establishing the Pomotor program within the community as it's already one of the key success, key success factors of LAYC. The second is to extend the PYD curriculum by licensing it and allowing for a custom tailor aspect which allow for top of mind awareness within the top, the nonprofit community. Thank you. And lastly, more of a long-term approach when we believe we have success moving forward in the long time is to educate the public by providing them resources to certify students. And now I'd like to hand it off to Stephanie to dive into our first step. Thank you, Brian. The first step of our implementation process is established. And what this means is that we would license our promotor program and, um, because we believe that we have the keys to success um, with our 100% mentorship, with 100% support 24-7, which, um, which empowers you to get back on its feet after um, the high-risk um, history. And so with this, um, we, with the increased um, revenues from the licensing, um, we hope that this would be a short-term revenue stream for us to expand to other um, areas outside the DC area, such as Oregon and California, in order to better empower others and to um, better support our organization in order to impact the lives of others. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jacob, where he'll go over our second implementation. So can you talk about, you know, like Stephanie said, and Brian reiterated, you know, the mission is so important to who we are. It really facilitates the plan that we put in place today. It really facilitates what we can do um, one of the things we're very excited about here is the extension part of our plan, where we're taking our uh, positive use development programs that are so important to our business and expanding it to other nonprofits across the country. You know, the way we look at it is right now, us and our competitors are very similar program where we have a curriculum that we implemented. It's very efficient, it has very uh, success, high success rates, but it lacks a personal touch that you and us feel like we've reiterated this whole time. Um, we believe that adding a custom tailoring aspect is really how we create the value for it. Um, so not only just tailoring our program, but also adding features and you know, short By doing so, we not only, not only allow us to expand to other industries and other nonprofits across the country, but we allow us to make sure that they are getting the best program for their program and that they are going to have the best success in making a difference in their community. So we're going back to the mission of what this is all about. So looking at the custom tailoring and what goes into this, uh, we really like to identify three main things to focus on. One, a customized version of a positive youth development program. Um, you know, something that we thought was so in uh, inspiring and intriguing was your willingness to make sit down with a business or a nonprofit, figure out what their small city is, and figure out what their identity is, and tailor a program around that. That's something that our competitors and other people aren't doing right now, and we want to capitalize on that. 
walking through services such as data collection, metrics, and the EPO, which is something that we already offer, but something that we can refer to the program and really ensure that we are our clients the best solution possible to make an impact in their community. Uh, one of our long term goals is providing education to our academic community. Thank you very much, Jacob. Let's talk about the third and final part of our strategy. How will we set up our YC for future success? Today we have come up with a two-part strategy that will help us train and educate the future leaders of tomorrow and help us empower the positive youth developers of tomorrow. The first part of our strategy is to partner up with universities and create a curriculum so that they can implement uh, it into their school. So we will partner up with universities around the greater Washington metropolitan area and we will expand from there. So by creating a curriculum for them to teach PYD, we'll be able to help them, uh, help students learn how to communicate with students, learn how to communicate with uh, students of different ethnicities, different religions, and we'll empower these students to really become the leaders of tomorrow. So as part of this program, um, students will be able to go through this class and be able to receive a certificate at the end of the class. So this is the second part of our strategy. Students will not only be learning in the classroom, they will be working hard for a certification that will allow them to put it on their resume and show that uh, they are able to interact with different types of students. They are able to uh, work with students to develop their potential and develop their future. So together, uh, partnering with universities and creating a certificate program, we're going to be able to expand nationwide to different universities and colleges. And through this, we're going to be able to expand our PYD program. We're going to help uh, different student leaders around different universities uh, develop their positive youth development skills and help them really be able to uh, fulfill their potential of becoming positive youth developers. So why does this matter? On the financial end, our revenues will increase year after year, uh, especially in year 2018, as you can see here, where this is when we really start to roll out our licensing program. So as shown in these types in year 2018, this is when we really start to receive our revenue and uh, start to increase our bottom line. With these revenues and licensing, which we roll out in year 2018, uh, we will have a lot of increased revenues, which we will be able to reinvest into our organization and really focus on what matters. We really want to focus on our mission and reinvesting in uh, the different types of services that we currently already provide. We want to continue to improve them and really make them the best that we can make them. And so, with all these financials being said, why does this all matter? Why, how does this uh, influence their organization? Stephanie will talk a little bit about this. Thanks, Jody. So, as, what does this mean for LAYC? Because of LAYC's high perceived value of what the individual would benefit from and what the organization would benefit, yeah, we believe that with our time that we uh, devote to these individuals to better the lives of these individuals, we we perceive that we have a large value proposition that is the that is our salsa that is different from um, other organizations. And so, with this, I feel I we believe that um, LAYC, with the licensing, with the consulting, um, as well as the certification program, can really empower the youth of others beyond the DC area, um, as well as within the DC area. So with that, I'll pass it over to my colleague Brian, where he'll close the presentation. Okay, so you're probably wondering, how is this going to look rolling out into the future? So we've identified different states with a high risk um, for teen poverty and a high risk teen. So with uh, LAYC's strategic location in the DC area, we have a strategic location beyond us. So we were able to extend to different states within the immediate area to immediately increase the impact. So, like I said, beyond our services, beyond our programs, what ultimately matters is being able to extend our offering and our mission to reach the lives of others. And we believe by identifying these areas for possible expansion in the future, um, we can do so. So with that, before we move any further into the presentation, we'd like to open up the floor for any Q&A or anything you'd like us to elaborate on at this time. Thank you so much. Did you want me to expand a little bit on how the revenue students impact that, or? Uh, 
Okay, okay, definitely. Um, so in year 2018 and 2019, that's really when we start to roll out our licensing program. So um, in year 2017 and, or sorry, in year 2016, uh, that is when we're going to, uh, or that's when we're going to expand our promoter pathways. So uh, that's when we focus solely on promoter pathways. And then by year 2018 and 2019, that is when we start rolling out our licensing program. So that's why uh, revenues increased by so much in years 2018 and 2019. Because by then, by that time, we will have two programs running, uh, both the promoter pathway and also the licensing. Um, and so, did you also want me to go a little bit to? Oh, I see, I see, I see. So, um, we expected that in the first two years, we would have relatively constant, um, relatively constant revenue, because we were starting off um, as we're just starting off our. Uh, consulting, and we're just starting off our licensing, so we didn't expect immediate growth right away. Uh, we expected more of the growth to come in 2020, when we have a little bit more experience in the field and a little bit more experience with getting to know our customer base. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so, with the, um, can you go to the, um, the, let's see, the financials, um, our implementation cost. Um, so, yes. So, so we figured that in the um, first year, we would uh, roll out our licensing. And so, this really, um, entails like the, the sales um, of the licensing, and so that would entail um, the travel expenses we're going to which we project to be around three thousand dollars for spiritual care accommodations. And then in this um, 2017, um, we, as for the consulting, we understand that it's a really a uh, time intensive um, consulting uh, rollout. And so this, um, we figured that we would have one employee. Uh, we, um, estimated that we would have one employee which um, for the year when the salary is typically around 44000 And so that's, um, if we were to invest one person to um, do that consulting, um, we would, um, it would need 44000 to um, have that human resource that come out there. Um, with the um, training, um, we also estimated based on industry trends that um, in order to bring somebody on board um, for training, it usually costs um, of an organization, uh, 3600 um, to bring on one employee. So that totals to around 48000 with a total of 54000 um, For 2018 and 2019, we applied a 2% growth rate, um, and that is also an industry um, growth rate. Um, and also, we uh, we project to expand this um, this project for the um, upcoming year. So that's the 2% uh, applied to the 44000 44 and um, that's what we apply for. Uh, so you want to roll out the program for the license to the other states. So would that be something that you can speak to that? Yeah. Um, so one of our things that we wanted to do, especially the promoter pathway tool, um, since we're not providing a highly customized experience, it's more of just so rolling out what it's looking for us other charities is identify other nonprofits with very similar solutions to us. Their core identities are very similar, and we have very similar um, uh, motivations and uh, statements. Um, so by doing so, you know, the expansion of the state is a very complicated as it would be if you were just rolling out the entire these programs. Um, so in the first few years, we're rolling out the licensing for the first time. Um, geographic area is very much a concern to us. We'd like to expand it into the DC knowledge of the area first to really establish the core base. But our main focus is finding uh, individual nonprofits that have very similar. So, originally we identified um, five potential options, and volunteer infrastructure being one of them. Um, however, we didn't believe in, in the first three phases it was um, necessarily the best approach for LIYC in, in terms of creating revenue streams. Um, so we believe once um, we are able to establish these partnerships and start returning that revenue stream back to LIYC, 
um, this is what we foresee our infrastructure system looking like. Uh, so creating systems where we're able to directly um, create um, strategic streamline hiring, um, processing, screenings, um, storing those in the database, um, being able to track um, short and just walk through projects as well. Um, once we're able to kind of put that into our ELT ETL database and kind of expand it. You know, one of the things that we've identified to us and we think is very interesting, especially in the nonprofit sector, that's not really common, is uh, doing an ETO process, which is tracking your efforts and how they have results in outcomes. Um, for our programs, you know, we really track a variety, we have a variety of programs with seven different focuses. Um, so those ETOs are different for the program. Uh, part of our consulting and tailoring program would be to identify what efforts a, a nonprofit wants to make and the outcomes they're looking for. Once we identify that, we're really going to be able to make a system that can track uh, automatically what a company or a nonprofit is doing, what the outcome is, and provide advice on the change. Uh, I think that's one of the big values of our presentation. Um, it's not really common in the nonprofit uh, sector, is that real lifetime data. Um, and there's so much data analytics to be able to better effectively make some In terms of the specific metrics. Mm -hmm. exactly. So with the current off program offering from with the ETO, um, currently how LAYC is currently tracking the metrics um, um, in terms of their education programs, it's based on um, pre-tests and retests, uh, so different things like that, and then in terms of events, in terms of attendance numbers. So we'll be able to reuse the current metrics that we already have within the database and apply them to our frameworks, especially since we're um, kind of not only solidifying our programs but expanding them, we'll be able to take the current metrics that we're already offering um, and tweak them over time based on trial and failure. Um, but we don't anticipate any high um, volume of ch changes in cost with those metrics um, as we can pass it in the main ones that we're already offering. talked a lot about the financials and kind of how those ramp up costs are going to influence our bottom line moving forward. And we talked a little bit about our metrics and kind of how we're going to be able to influence those and track our progress over time to ensure that those LLC program participants are getting the, possible, the best possible program experience that they can within the time at LLC. So the, we'll briefly overview the three main programs in our phases um, so far. Uh, for one, we want to establish the Promotor program, which is the housing and high risk individuals. Um, our licensing this program, which is already, we're already able to replicate, but are not currently selling, we'll be able to create consistent revenue streams to fuel our success throughout our other two sectors. If we're extending our PYD curriculum, then we haven't necessarily had the revenues to license and for other people to purchase. Once we're able to obtain revenues from our established base, this is something that will become feasible and allow us to distinguish ourselves within the nonprofit industry. And lastly, moving forward into the long term future, having those strategic partnerships with those universities to allow us to not only empower the minds of those individuals, but allow them the tools to go ahead and spread the mission of LIRC moving forward in, in, in wherever their communities and careers make sense. So we understand that LIRC is a strong strategic 2017 vision, um, but we leave, believe with these um, changes in mind, we can suggest a vision 2020, carrying us forward into the future, so we're able to, like we said, track these metrics moving forward, tweak where we need to, and really apply these moving forward. So like Cody said, we talked a lot about the bottom line and the financials and how that's really going to influence. But really what we find valuable and more than just the financials is the triple bottom line. Not only do we create revenue streams to go back into our program, but we're creating a system where we can increase the overall environment of the community. So like we said earlier, whether that's expanding to different states with high-risk teams, we're able to touch more lives and create better external community and community as a whole. And lastly, through our social programs, we're allowing to like we've seen with Christina, we're able to build a network and create lasting relationships that carry through and touch all of the work that we do. And this is something that we feel very passionate about. 
So like we said, moving forward, everything we want to touch on goes through this mission and this test. How can we empower the youth by creating revenue streams that can go back into our program so we can increase the touch points that we have with the community, increase the lives, the quality of lives of other people, and really fulfill and extend the mission of LIMC. So like we've seen with Christina, these success set stories is what drives our business and what drives LIC's um, passion for the community. So whether it's obtaining your GED, finding a safe place to live, or simply having a place to paint after school. Whatever it is for you, we want to make sure that we're there. And we believe there are thousands of other people out there like this singer that simply don't have the resources to create a better life for themselves. And that's where it falls on us to take the first step, reach out with our helping hands, and be there to be that face with the nonprofit. So with that, we'd like to thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you next week for the first step of our implementation plan. Thank you so much.